Alright guys, hello and welcome to day two of week one of the Challenger Cup. It's going to be Europe today. Going through this first game, it's going to be Six Sigma facing off against Fate Esports. I'm Zayden once again here at the one, the only Hindu man. Yeah, welcome back once again. EU's underway and I've got to say, we've got a lot of teams this time around in EU that are looking pretty damn strong. Um, I don't know exactly where it's going to go. All I know for a fact is Spicy Waffles is in the mix and they're like my number one go-tos for the tournament. But the Pappies are in here once again looking strong. We've got the Broncos back again on top of that as well as Elo Fishers. And then there's still some extra teams that have come around this time as well and been forming. They're looking actually very, very scary indeed. But for the start off, we're going to see Six Sigma made up of Deku, Scrub, Angry Day, Bobasaur, and Mr. Crunchy and Vote NBK facing off against Fate Esports of Otterish, Princey, Zyferia, Gale Force, and Loxy Poxy. So that said, picks and bands are flying through right now. Thor, Sir Cat, banned out by Six Sigma. On the other side, it's going to be Athena, Bologna, banned out by Fate Esports. Really nothing too surprising out there. I'm a little happy to not see the constant ban every single Guardian in the game thing like we were seeing yesterday. And with that, speaking of those Guardians not being banned out, it's going to be Sylvanas locked in for that first pick. Mm, so let's just get locked in. And um, with the Savannah's being locked in there over there, it just basically means that that's kind of standard. Savannah's so gets through, he's going to get picked up still. Did take a nerf to his wave clear. Uh, well, not necessarily his wave clear, because he still does AoE damage and still does the full damage to those minions. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't provide a knockback effect anymore. I don't think that's going to be a big enough nerf to really change Savannah's no. as a whole. But we'll see going forwards a Six Sigma are choosing their picks. That's nice quick. Yeah, it's going to be neat the side and picked up by Fade Esports on the other side. The teams are backwards. Why wouldn't they be? Fixed now on the production overlay. Yay! Uh, Six Sigma locking in the Neath and Poseidon. Mid lane, AD carry, possibly getting picked up. Neath has actually been getting played quite a bit. Last is specifically playing it over in the mid lane, so it may not be over there. Solo lane Neath has also been a thing occasionally. But with that said, Yana Shibalanke also locked in by Fade Esports. I mean, Neath honestly is very, very strong right now just because of the amount of damage you can get out of Heartseeker. Blue Storm pending keeps are pretty sustained. On top of the fact, people now realize that she's got a lot of damage potential. Global Ultimate is effective, and Unravel for sustain is definitely going to be viable, as well as people learning to use the Weaves while well, remembering that Weaves even exist. Yep, that's for sure. It's going to be Hunbats getting locked in right before we on the counter banning phase. Still a very, very strong, viable jungler. That Fear No Evil can just be such a playmaker, and if absolutely nothing else, force somebody to use the all-important beads, which then sets up huge stuff for the rest of the team. Bacchus with that Intoxicate as well coming in the comp. Uh, it, this is a little bit of order, guys. I do apologize for that. They are ahead. Bacchus was the first one to get picked in after the counter banning phase. We're going to catch up here real quick. Bacchus coming in. Yeah, get was um, underway by Fate Esports, and then because of that, you saw Bacchus get picked yeah. up. Um, basically, they needed the support, and that's where the support's going to go to. Um, it's not real, real surprise there. Obviously, you're going to see Sylvanas picked up. Bacchus is kind of a go-to in that role when you see the likes of Ymir and the likes of Athena and Geb taken away. Bacchus is kind of up there. At least in EU, Ymir definitely prioritized a little bit more than the Bacchus. But Bacchus still strong, still yeah. useful. But we're going to see a Kabraken lock in, though. We saw a lot of it yesterday being played by Wolfie over in an A. It, he's a god who doesn't generally see all that much play. He's going to be over in... Look at the team composition. Is that going to be a jungle Kabraken? It's looking like it is. There's a pretty good amount of gank setup. One of the biggest problems Kabraken has is the fact that he has to get to melee range to actually use his stun. It's a, a next successful basic attack. It, uh, the way it usually tends to go for me, I run up to, to somebody, think I'm going to land it, I swing, I miss, I then have to run and catch back up again. So it can be kind of tricky to land the one. The two it can be unreliable as well because you have to take damage prior to it actually being a stun. Well, his gank potential is pretty strong in the early game. You've got to think of uh, Kabraka Jungle very similar to a Ymir Jungle in terms of how they will look for the ganks. They're going to get in there. Generally, they'll go blink, look to use. In this case, with Kabraka, it's a stun. With Ymir, it's a freeze. Um, and what they'll be looking to do is get up close, deal the damage out. And then as the game transitions, they become more of just of a frontline guardian. They'll do a little bit less damage as the scaling is generally not as strong. Um, but they will be able to provide a good frontline. And that's exactly what they need to have online, honestly, when you're going to be running two hunters as it looks like we're going to be seeing uh loxy and otterish both running them solo and duo respectively yep, so that's it guys we're gonna cut to a quick little break while we wait, wait on the anti-ghost timer to tick on down and let us into the actual game itself once that's done we'll be back here with the first game of the day 
All right, guys, so welcome back. It's time for the first match of the day. It's going to be Six Sigma facing off against Fate Esports in this round of 32 match for week one of the EU Challenger Cup. Mm. Fate Esports and Six Sigma should be an interesting game because at the moment there's a lot of names in this that I recognize from both sides of these. Six Sigma are going to look at that on the right side for a potential early invade. They're just going to drop a ward down for now, get some vision done. I'm pretty sure that got spotted out by Fate Esports as that did happen. So they back off for a second. Interesting figure, Gale Force is going to be playing Kabrak and Jungle, which we discussed, but he has opted to go for Blink at the start of the game. And generally, if you're going to go for this very, very early Blink, you're looking to make a play with it early on. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to be as useful as taking those boots just for a little bit quicker on the rotations. Yeah, the blink stun is going to be the kind of bread and butter of those ganks. If he does not land that, that's 300 gold off the table. He basically essentially needs to make this work before his first back, or that blink will have kind of been a little bit of a waste, as opposed to just getting boots for the extra mobility means mm -hmm. he gets the jungle camps and other lanes a little bit more quickly. Minions. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a big issue, because you're going to get blink on the rack and jungle generally anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just that by taking it earlier on, he shows that he's probably looking for signs of aggression a lot earlier. Trying to make this rack and jungle get off to a flying start. But buffs have spawned, and it looks like they're going to start blue buffer Six Sigma here over on this right-hand side at the top. They're going to take the blue buff down and look for an early invade by the looks of it. That's going to be the game yep. plan here. That early ward that they put down has given them vision that obviously Loxy Poxy on all does not have hog. This could be a bit of a rough one. Did they use it for that first camp? They did not, so Hog is still available. We'll see if they can sneak in and steal this one away. They're going to go for the overhand smash off Mr. Crunchy. Without a mana buff in lane, Ul's going to have a little bit of a rough time. He will have that blue stone pendant, and it the steal was successful, so Mr. Crunchy's going to have that extra bit of mana to work with. Which, you know, as a jungler, you typically want that speed, but you can never complain about a little bit of extra mana. Well, it's not too bad because obviously Ul's going to have blue. Ul's going to have blue stone pendant mm -hmm. here. He should still be able to sustain enough without having that mana buff online. But it's going to delay him hitting level two a little bit longer. Put him behind this Bakasora in lane, and Bakasora at level five can go critical mass, as we all know. And if he does get the opportunity to get the kill earlier on, it will cause it. But talking about kills, there's already been one. Indeed, that's for sure. As if you're making a grab, pulling. Uh, which one was that? That fell. Deku scrub. Getting pulled into the middle of that one. Unfortunately for him, will fall. Going to be a little bit behind in that lane. We missed it on screen, but you know, looking at what happened, that was probably it. So Zyferia looks like, at least as far as I can tell, making those early grabs pay off. Not really sure how that really happened in that lane. I mean, they put Neath into this into this lane. Neath and Bacchus should be able to wave clear quite effectively against Sylvanas and Jabalonki. They will have a little bit more poke potential and wave clear, but Neath is good enough at clearing to be able to keep this lane safe enough. I think they were just too pushed up, didn't respect Sylvanas, and took a pull to the face. Yeah, something you always have to be aware of and watch out for. Take a peek at the other lanes, what's going on over there. Mid lane, it looks like for now at least, Princey's doing okay. Yanis, not necessarily known for his early game wave clear. Equal on level with Angry Day QQ. At this point, he's pretty much able to clear the wave in just two quick little abilities. A Whirlpool, Tidal Surge later. Minions tend to die. So I'm just checking in with the builds as well, coming out from Six Sigma and Fate Esports. Both of them are opted for Hog 2 here. No early um, other options. They just went for faster Hog 2s, which is quite surprising, actually. It's not something you don't necessarily see, is the quicker Hog 2 routes from the supports. Generally, they're looking to get boots online before they finish off the Hog, but starting Hog 2 is a little bit cheaper later on, but mid lane, bit of aggression. Yeah, they're looking for a little bit of a kill. Mr. Crunchy might have overstayed his welcome just a little bit. He'll sneak away with just about 100 health remaining on his health bar. Fortunately for him, Gale Force was not able to find that second stun, which bought him that just enough of a slower time to run away. Yo, that tidal wave was really important coming out from Angry Day. He actually saved his life there. He would have gone down if it wasn't for the fact Angry Day didn't manage to hit him with that knock sorry, the tidal surge knockback was very, very important. But mid hop he's spawning now. You can see there's a little bit of a group in here. Poseidon level 5, keep an eye on him. He's the one that I'm going to look to make the play because he'll crack into Sylvanas every day of the week if he gets a chance. Yep, left side harpies are going to go down to Deco Scrub using the hand of the guy to secure that one right side. Mr. Crunchy's in position as well. It looks like both camps may be going to Six Sigma right now. Teams are apparently wrong, Hindu, so I'm going to be fixing that quickly. Yeah, it won't take two seconds to fix over. Six Sigma on the red side, obviously giving up the first blood, but they're doing it okay for themselves at those mid harpies. You can see even after that first blood going to fake spots, they do have a small golden experience lead right now. Yeah, makes a little bit of sense. They got that. Uh... Uh, they've, they've been doing a little bit better on the farm, even despite that first blood being given up by Deku Scrub. Oops, some aggression mid lane toxic comes out as well as the belly flop. That is just a very, very dead Gale Force in the back of that. Yeah, it is. And that's one thing that 
Poseidon can do time and time again. Against Sylvanas, against Kobrakan, both of these gods generally set themselves up for being able to be womboed by the Whirlpool Kraken combo. More than likely is Sylvanas, but that time around it's Kobrakan. Still wasn't level 5 yet, couldn't really do much, just ate the Kraken to the face. And as a Guardian, you don't really like seeing Poseidons, honestly. They, they cause issues. A nice little play from Angry Day QQ there. And the boys, it was a good pull though, coming out, honestly, from uh, Zyfe Zyferi as well, onto the Horn Bats, but there was no real follow-up. Hmm. So for now, at least, first guys, uh, first backs coming out of the mid lanes right now. Shoes of the Magi picked up by Poseidon, getting that extra little bit of a mana buffer to work with. So it's a nice little one. It's a topic of discussion sometimes amongst people. Shoes of Focus versus Shoes of the Magi. Late game, Shoes of Focus with that cooldown reduction generally favored slightly on many, many gods because why not use your abilities more often for more damage? But the extra chunk of magical power and mana early on generally is a pretty nice benefit for pretty much any magical based god. Yeah, it can help them out as well. It depends what the build's going to be more than likely anything else. But an invasion on the left-hand side. The purple buff is going to get dropped down. I think going to pick that one up. The invasion does work out. There's going to be no follow-up there from Six Sigma. But maybe Gale Force wants to make something happen with his blink. No, he takes an auto. That auto was actually really important from Vote BK because they could have potentially looked for an auto and engage there. Yep, not the blink. Of course, when you're in combat, you cannot blink, which is unfortunate for any gods who may want to be doing that. You can go the combat blink route, but then you have to deal with that pesky three minute timer. No one wants anything to do with that. While well, that little bit of invade was going on in the left lane, though, uh, Bobasaur playing that Bakasaur over in that right lane. Cheeky blue buff invade shenanigans, keeping Ul on the back foot, having to rely solely on that blue stone pendant for mana. It's just smart of Bakasaur to look for those sort of plays against the Hunter in this lane. You're looking to keep him down. He's going to try stacking and farming. If he wants to stay safe in the lane, he's got to be very careful with how much mana he uses now. Because obviously he's going to just be running on Bluestone, as you say. You can see he's already picked up Beads early on, which is very, very smart of him. Hasn't died yet, which is important. Level 9, you'll see if we can see Bakasaur look for this kill onto Loxypoxy again. And see if the Cripple can be put to good use. More than likely not, though, because Beads jump will be available. Yeah, the uh, Regurcha is still on cooldown. Typically, Bakasauras look for that big all-in le uh, level 5 push. You have Hog ready, you Hog the Archers, you pop Regurgitate, and you just get a kill. Ul has the option, Bakasaur goes forward towards those Archers when he hits level 5. You just glory bound away, and suddenly uh, Bakasaura is nowhere near you, and you're relatively safe, unless he wants to really, really commit to diving a tower, which at level 5 is still fairly risky. Up oh, mid hops in the left, go to Six Sigma. Right ones have spawned as well. Going to be contested though by Six Sigma. As you see, Bobasaur has rotated over, and they're going to get picked up as well by the boys of Six Sigma. No, it's Angry Day QQ there, actually just holding, hugging the wall in mid lane again. Mm -hmm. Yes, the experience range has increased once again, and that means that you can hug the wall and get experience over it. Happy, happy days for supports. Oh, and mid lane too. Yeah, without a doubt. It's dude, why walk around the wall when you can just stand near it. It's beneficial, beneficial, it's nice, and that experience range as well makes it so much better for supports. Uh, maybe a little bit harder to zone people out from experience, which can at the same time be a bit of a disadvantage. But at the same time, it's one of those things like, oh, I just missed most of a wave experience because I was just a tiny bit too far away. So it has some benefits to being back to the longer range. Deacus Grub looking for a possible set of mid lane, or maybe just looking to rotate back over. But got pulled in! Oh, that pull. That pull was fantastic. But the flop away is going to save the day as per usual. One of the benefits of Bacchus there. You can see Deck is really looking for the flop. He's looking to try and get someone with the Kraken and keep an angry day. Because the Kraken will come. Yep, that was a kill Please without even needed. using that. They used the World Weaver from across the map to secure it. Prince is going to find a nice little bit of poke on the two, but no follow up to be had yet again. For now, at least, Fade Esports is just looking to play safe and just farm up as much as they possibly can, but Six Sigma are slowly but surely out-farming them. Yeah, slowly but surely. I mean, what's happening is you're going to see Bakasaura doing an okay job in that lane. Uh, Neef's able to wave clear a lot more quickly than Jabalonke, case. So the experience in that lane may look a little bit in favor of Neef earlier on. But Jabba does have that early kill for himself, so Otto is not going to be too bad off there. And then, on, obviously, in the mid lane, it's kind of a 3v3 grouping, but a rotation mid from Bakasaura. Ooh. Nope, Prince, he's going to spot that one out quickly enough to make sure he didn't yeah. hang around too long. Yeah, that ward down. One threshold later, more or less back to safety. Uh, some counter warding going on left-hand side. Looks like Six Sigma may be thinking about a gold fear attempt here in the very near future. They've been looking for these picks non-stop. You see Deku Scrub kind of always in range to belly flop somebody if he ever so chooses. So basically, especially if they can get a kill to Zyfury again, take the hand of the gods off the table. They could look for a gold fury. That said, they could also just look to force a gold fury and just burst it down very quickly. Zyfury is here, though. 
Yep, he is here, but the Kraken comes out to help burst it quickly. Zyfair can't really do much there. Team weren't really in a position to help defend that one. I told you, Belonke had just based as well with the rotation of back and so They're looking for more, though, in the jungle. That was a nice grab to interrupt that belch of the gods from Deku Scrub. Some poke going back and forth right now. They were looking to give chase, but they weren't sure exactly where Shibalanke was. They had tabs on Gale Force, so they could possibly have looked to continue that. But we got the Gold Fury. We have a victory. Why push our luck? That said, you can get a kill anyway. Well, the Zyphir is going to go down in there. The Whirlpool once again to Angry Day QQ. There's the Ferno Evil Ultimate over the back as well to zone out everybody else. As well as the Cripple coming out from Kasora's Regurgitate. And that's going to cause a lot of issues now for Fate Esports. Six Sigma win that engagement well. And it's all been set up because of the Gold Fury mainly. No, actually, mm -hmm. the, the pick just before the Gold Fury really set it up. And you can see Six Sigma's comp generally is like, have we got all of this up? Yes, let's fight. Have we not got all of this up? No. Let's fall. That's all it's going to be over and over again. Yep, another thing to take into as well, he's like a touch on Deku Scrub with his positioning right now. He's always keeping somebody within range of that belly flop. If they, cho like if they chose to go in, they can do it whenever they so please. So it kind of it's keeping Fade Esports very much hugging the tower, and every single, I think with the exception of dual lane and soul lane, mid lane, every single wave, they're losing gold to the tower just because the they cannot push the wave out and clear it before it actually gets to the tower. So at the moment you can see it's 7,000 experience. That is a huge chunk of change that has just appeared on the map. And it's slowly progressed since the first mid harpy spawned. And it's consistently gone further and further deeper into the experience lead in favor of Six Sigma. It's going to be a rough ass to fate esports now. Their, their composition, honestly, can do well in the late game. But the amount of CC they've got is a little bit limited to this Kabrak and the Sylvanas, who at the moment aren't as strong as their counterparts in the roles. You can see Kabrakan, as an example, Gale Force is currently three levels down on this Hun Bats. And that's going to be a problem for him because if your frontline tanks aren't tanky Zaiden, then you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, that's another big factor. Nice pull once again from Zyseri. does grab Deku Scrub. Unfortunately, he does have that pesky belly flop which allows him to leap straight back out to safety. But another that's thing... helping them out. That Deku's doing there, like, it's not a bad play from him. He's getting pulled and like, okay, I'll flop away. Now they know the pull's on cooldown for roughly 18 seconds unless he's maxing one. it. Yeah, and then in that case, that allows him to go aggressive and not have to worry about the pulls coming out. Yeah. He's currently got a couple of points into it, though, so it's like, he's still at 24, sorry, 27 seconds right now. So it's still a long time. Yeah, 27 seconds, though, compared to a belly flop on what I believe it's about 12 second cooldown if they add normal rank. I should take that as well. 16 seconds, so much shorter cooldown on that belly flop, at least at this point in the game. And so you get, you belly flop out. You then have the option to belly flop again with the grab still being on roughly a 15 second cooldown. So it works out. It's a fair trade, like you said. Uh, some roaming around the jungle right now. Bit of a lull once again while they wait on the ultimates to finally be back up. Yeah, Zyphira with another oh, grab, nice <laughs> grab Mr. Crunchy, and I believe that forced the that beads out beats. off of him. Yeah. It did. It did fast speeds, which was a nice little pickup for them. I think the biggest issue here, though, is the only engage they've really got in this mid lane. Oh, great ultimate coming out from Zyphiri, but he's still going to eat a Kraken and a Whirlpool as well, followed by a Fear No Evil. He gets absolutely destroyed. Gale Force trying to do what he can with the stuns. And the backside puts his through space in time, going to hit two, but he's only going to find one of the kills. The World Weaver comes out to hit Gale Force, and that's going to give Mr. Crunchy the chance to find the kill. And here's Backer. Help our start dropping so rapidly, but Bobasaur arriving from that soul lane with a timely, timely rotation. Turn that one back around. Princey and Galeforce falling in the double kill over to him. Otterish is here from the duo lane right now, trying to defend this tier 1 mid tower, but it's looking like it is going to fall to the archers and go to MBK, who also made a rotation over. It looked like Fade Esports finally had that oh so important team fight victory they had, but the rotations ended up hurting them in the end when they lost two more. That was, that was nice and clean, honestly, from Six Sigma. I mean, apart from the beads being burned earlier, which was really nice, it, the problem that I was about to say is fake esports have is that they're relying on a pull from Sylvanas, and they're relying on a blink engage from the Kabrakan to actually do anything. To actually fight them, they're the two engages that they're looking for. Or maybe an axe later on down the line or a portal. But at the moment, it's generally Kabrakan and Sylvanas that are engages, and if you keep forcing them to use the, they use it and they don't get anything out of it, they've got mm -hmm. no way of stopping the engagement yeah and six sigma collapsed very well then yeah both are pretty tricky as well the nature's grasps it, it's a great ability but it is very very slow it's easy to it's pretty telegraphed as well if you spot it like being channeled you can sometimes move out of the way pop beads preemptively left side it looks like a bit of rotation coming out the blink stun not going to connect backflip used successfully by button bk tectonic ship does stop. come down but they're not going to pursue oh. that any further because the rotation coming in from six sigma 
I'm surprised they potentially could have got the kill then, but the wise decision was to back away with the rotation coming in. I think they could have actually picked up if they all fully committed and then still been able to fight as a team at decent HP. But in the end, they go for the play, don't find the stun initially, the backflip came out. And because of that, and the, the backup, it, they've lost the purple and maybe even the red. Over on the left, uh, right hand side as well, Bulbasaur is still constantly invading that jungle, just took the speed buff away from Gale Forest. I wouldn't be too surprised to see him try for the mana buff again here in the near future. Loxypoxy is doing a very good job on that old clearing those waves, not really affecting too much. He's still yet to die over there as well. A little surprising in the fact that Bakasura has a very, very strong all in potential. But he's done good rotations, honestly. He's abusing the... If he's not getting the kills, he's abusing the enemy jungle. He's also rotating to mid lane. When these ganks are happening, we saw him pick up the kill onto Princey at the end of the engagement, which was just good time on the rotation. They're looking in mid, though, for another play. Kraken is available. Most of the gods. Uh, Darkest Knights from Shibalanke will have been used there defensively just to make sure no one was going to get caught out. As Mr. Crunch is going to take this opportunity to steal away some back harpies, that right side jungle for Fade Esports has just been completely decimated this entire game between Mr. Crunchy and Bobasaur just in there constantly. Left hand side, they know that damage buff is still up and it looks like they might not want to give this up. Actually, no, they don't care about the damage gold. buff. They want that gold fury because it has since respawned. Exactly, no one's in a position to defend this. We've just seen the rotation, but it's going to be too little too late here. Cypher is not going to get there in time. He's going to walk up, find out he's down, and now he's going to get turned up. Yep, they're spending quite a bit to get this, but they're going to secure the kill to the support. A little bit of an like extra prize there. Angry Day now in a bit of a bad spot. Tectonic like shift has been dropped from Kraken, but his health bar is dropping as well, trying to get away now. That's the issue. That's the issue for Gale Force here. He's not getting out any damage because he's not got any survivability to sit there with the Whirlpool and take that damage. The fight is still going on. The Mr. Crunchy drops low. Orish doing what he can. The beads has been popped, throws out the poison and going to try and trade off with Neath, but losing that trade effects with a fantastic ending backflip there that does do damage that a lot of people forget about. <laughs> One of the biggest problems in these fights right now is just Fade Esports, that experience lead that Six Sigma have picked up for themselves. Guardians get very tanky just off their level scaling. Sovereignty was completed mm -hmm. for that as well in the case of Deku Scrub. If that fight had happened even just two minutes ago, that final... Deku Scrub very well could have been dead because the damage on the on Princey would have been scaling up pretty much to a, a, a slightly higher rate until the Guardians uh, protection scaling kind of catches back up a little bit about, about this point. So, you know, even just a couple minutes ago, that fight could have gone a little bit better for Fade Esports, but, it, it, you know, at this point in the game, Six Sigma have a pretty significant lead, not only in experience, but also gold. Well, they're trying to make a play on the left-hand side here to try and bring down Neith, who just took down the tower, but she's not even used backflip yet. She's been very patient with it. Didn't panic there in the use of her abilities. Actually had backflip up on the right side as well. Bobasora does get the tier one tower there as well. And left, Bakasora's engaging again. Yeah, we'll see if they can turn this one around. Kabrakan going in. There's Dark Slats coming out from Shibalanke. There's that back looking for the MBK using defense way of, away from the three members of Fade Esports. But it looks like they're not coming into this fight. They realize the rotation's coming in yet again. They're backing off, but they might get pincered here. Looking a little bit too aggressive here, but the good news is, is that he has got reinforcements. Like he said, Fano Evil does land. Overhand smash as well. Crunchy finds one. And round the back comes Princey, but Angry Day turns up as well. They've not noticed him yet. They will wonder if that Kraken comes out. There was one auto attack. I don't know if they knew that or not. But he's just kind of waiting behind that they wall, looking for the opportunity. You see him just came back past. So the Gale Force is definitely within that threshold where a combo from Angry Day Cuckoo could pick this him up. This is off. death. They're all dead. They're all dead. They're all dead. Bo Boba Slow is here as well. Watch this. They're going to die this. Yeah. Yep. For sure. They don't know it yet. There's the other one. The down. They're going. But Prissy does manage to get through the pole. One is going to actually survive. They're all going to live. Luckily, they're back to where at the right time. I guess they telegraphed it too easily, but they do lose a tier 2 tower for it. In the left side, the right side, Fate Esports do get the tier 1 going to Loxy Poxy, and he's going to be able to get the tier 2 as well. So that trade wasn't that bad no. for Fate Esports that time around. It's actually overall a uh, fairly, you know, if you look at the graph, it kind of just leveled off there for a little bit. A little bit back and forth, but a slight, slight gain for Fade Esports on that one. They still have a long way to go to bring this back towards neutral, however, as Tier 2 Tower in the mid lane is now under assault by Six Sigma. There's a Wrath Terror from Zyphira. They want the fight. They want to start defending this their base. They've got to defend somewhere. Deku's going to go down to the tower there, even if he does body flop away. But the tower falls, and Otterish gets the credit for Deku's life. And now there's an opportunity for a re-engage. They're going to pop Sprint and chase this. Darks with 90 as well. Beads, of course, out by Angry Day QQ. He's going to follow as well. It's the second kill coming out for Fade Esports right now. They're going to be going forward 5v3. Tier 1 tower mid lane could be a threat right here. There's no real other no objective minions. for them to focus, but yeah, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. They're going to go for it anyway, have Zyphira tank that one up. 
Well, no ultimates available for them, so they're going to have to disengage Six Sigma here. Once again, Kabrakan, aggressive there, Gale Force, looking for the damage, but it's more than he gave out. And now he's going to have to back away. He may go down in trade there to the hand of the overhand smash of Mr. Crunchy. Axe comes out from Loxy, returns some damage onto him, but a tier one tower for a tier two may not have been the best trade. They could, I mean, honestly, they could have played that a little bit cleaner. I would have potentially looked for a fire giant there, because there wasn't a whole lot they could do against that. They could have gone for fire giant. Uh, because of Loxy Poxy's uh, split push, it was actually an even trade in the end. The one kill towards the tail. Yeah, okay, whatever. Pretty much even, but Fade Esports made a big play. They very so much needed to get. Mr. Crunch was looking for Otterish left hand side. Not going to find it, unfortunately, for him. Fadius where it's making the good call right now. They need to get back to base with all those mana bars, but Six Sigma might be looking for the fire giant you were just talking about. Yeah, I mean, that should have been a fire giant, honestly. They could have pushed down mid. There was only two up, and they had no ultimates available to defend it. But the fire giant has been started by Six Sigma here. Loxy's well aware of it. Bit low on mana, but enough to escape for now. The weakening curse comes out early from Daku. Intoxicate your drunk son because you just spilt your beer for free. And now there's a bait. It's happening. Oh my god, Kabrakan jumped through that portal. Wow. At least it was Kabrakan. He's still only level 11, though. Possibly key though, the uh, Intoxicate did force beads from Zyphiri, which means he can't just blink over the wall from behind the Fire Giant pit. It frees up Six Sigma, kind of a little bit extra breathing room if they decide to commit to a Fire Giant push here. But they know Fade Esports did get time to return back from their base. Most of them are back up to full mana. Loxy Poxy has a mana potion ticking away at the moment, I believe, in addition to that uh, Bluestone Pendant, so he'll, he will be okay. I know something's still kind of going on over here, but I don't know if they are aware Mr. Crunchy went back to base. I'm surprised they don't send somebody over to the left-hand lane here and look to push down a Phoenix while they're actually dealing with this opportunity. They know they've got vision control, and the gold fire drive is still ticking away slowly on HP. They have to fight soon for esports. I think Six Sigma should just keep going on this fire giant. I don't know why they're not, because they know they've got a monstrous experience advantage of 15,000 and an 8k gold lead at 20 minutes in. That's a huge lead. Why not just fight? Why yeah. not force them in to try and steal and then turn it and just fight them? Steal, that's a little the bait's not working. Yeah, the Unstable Vortex, or not that, excuse me, Through Space and Time is still on cooldown, but I think they might be just waiting for the Intoxicate to come up with Deku Scrub. For 14 seconds, they, they're looking to set that up. The Intoxicate's not the most devastating debuff in the game, it's very frustrating. I think a lot of people, <laughs> that, they're basically just looking for that burst, but they finally got tired of waiting to look to zone this out and actually start this fight up. The Weakened weak Curse has been deployed as well as Intoxicate. Yeah, Baka took a lot of damage there. Actually, pops from Goji State. Bobasaur is in a bit of trouble there. He's going to go down because he left over the wall at a bad opportunity. The Kraken comes out, gets juked out nicely by Loxy Poxy. Princey does bring down the Neath, and now it's going to be a hell to pay from Fate Esports as they're time to turn this fight from a terrible engagement from Six Sigma. Otterish getting that kill. It is now only Deku Scrub left standing. This is going to come down to a steel attempt right now. He does have the Wrath of the Gods available. It's going to come down to can he belly flop in? You see Princey on zoning duty right now. This is very much what Fade Esports needed to get themselves back in this game. A very favorable engagement. And right now, Deku Scrub is just running for his life from Gale Sports. He needs to get into that fire oh, giant it's soon. Working, though. It's working. No, it no, is. it's working though, because look at how much damage it's taking. It's taking him a long time to do it. Deku will have belly flop up again soon. He could potentially steal this away. It's not easy though. It's not easy, but Zyphere is taking a lot of damage. He doesn't flop right now. He's too late. Too little, too late. And he will go down as well. Delayed the aside. Actually, still will be a deer side in favor of Fate Esports. The turnaround was big. Six Sigma engaged badly. And to Fate Esports credit, they played that well. Played yeah. it very well. Once the escapes were down in the middle of that fight, there was really nothing that Six Sigma could do. They were getting picked off one by one. Bulbasaur was way in the enemy back line, getting his focus down. The wall came down, Tectonic Shift blocked Angry Day at QQ out in that speed buff pit. He was then stuck in that pit. He got picked off. Backside of the fight, Otterish had nobody peeling him off. He was having a field day. When you cannot lock down the enemy AD carry, and they're just tearing through your back line, you know the fight just went all sorts of wrong. Yep. I think the the biggest thing that happened there was the Baka started jumping over the wall. When yeah. Baka jumped over the wall and the rest of the team were in a position to follow him in, they all went, hang on a minute, that's that's a Baka. And Baka carried on going into the fight. He was on the front line with Deku, popped the regurgitate, but he didn't get out in time to stop Princey portaling through the wall. And that ultimate went on cooldown. That gave the opportunity for the re-engage to happen. And already, by the time the re-engage began, Bobasaur was below half HP because of the engagement and the way it began. So straight away, they'd lost their solo lane assassin. And then the cleanup crew just came in. Princey hit some fantastic damage. But on the backside, Otterish was just free there to throw out Bola virus time and time again.
Yep. So there's at least one of I'm gonna call it three tower, and that's tier one in the left lane for Fades to pick up. After that, though, Six Sigma, they still have a very significant experience lead right now. They could consider seriously defending either of those tier two towers. So they're definitely not at this yet, though Fade Esports with that Fire Giant belt on four of their five members, kind of putting themselves back towards equal footing, at least as far as item and physical power and stat-wise concerned for their offenses. Yeah, it's it's not over right now. Honestly, I still think Six Sigma have the opportunity to, st to win this game and still stay in yeah. control. They may need to give away this Gold Fury, though, which will bring the Gold Fury difference a little bit lower the experience lead still in six sigma's favor they should go back to farming here look for the split push and still use the level advantage try and keep the pressure off while this fire giant's on make them waste this fire giant clearing out minions not looking for a big play against the fire giant which is what they're doing and right now in the backside of this fight prince is just able to skirt away from boba Sora. he's the anis he has a portal he can go through walls freaking hacks why are they going through walls just silly stuff leap over a wall like a normal god yanis as boba Sora just did but yeah, wasting the fire giant or forcing them to waste it would be probably the best play they could look for right now. They're even keeping them away from that tier 1 tower, because all they have to do is just start to rotate over. Gold-wise, fire giant is worth about 7,000 for the buff being active on anybody. So gold-wise, they're about 1,000, 2,000 ahead, but if you look at those level matchups still, it's not too good. Well, there's a one more coming out for No Evil Six Sigma. Do get the Golf Fury, but we saw on the backside does get the regurgitate off onto Prince. He teleports through a wall. He's going to eat a lot of poke damage from the through space and time. And Tremors Irish secures that kill. Irish now starts to deal as much damage as he can on the backside. Poxy trading with Angry Day to QQ. Going to eat a Kraken and go down to Angry Day. Now you're going to see Irish trying to throw out bowlers as the leap in from Mr. Crunch. As I fear he's doing it. Gale Force with a stun. The fight's still going. They're going to go back and forth a little bit on this one. Irish is still doing a lot of work in this fight. His health bar, though, is dropping very, very rapidly. There is a kill for Prin onto Princey by Vote MBK. Zephyr is getting low. Otter is trying to do what he can to answer a kill. Does fine. We're looking for Deacon Scrub as well. Will fall, however. This fight is going the way of Six Sigma. Galeforce answers one back on the front of that fight. It actually went even three for three. Galeforce will likely no get on this one. It was no way. Kill wise, six kill wise, it was solved. Three three. Okay, yeah, yeah, of course, kill wise, but like but, they got a yeah. kill. Six Sigma got a Gold Fury. They got rid of three Fire Giant buffs. They left two supports alive, yeah. and now they're going to be able to push down mid lane a little bit. I potentially would have liked them to go for the tier two tower right here. This was the best opportunity because they could have taken a tower. They won't really get a Phoenix in this situation. But from what they did there, I think that was a little bit messy from Fate Esports. They didn't respect the fact that they were behind on experience. Still, that was the problem. They yeah. didn't ex respect the whoops behind an experience. So they tried to do 1v1 battles because they had Fire Giant. And that's where it went wrong for them. And in those 1v1 battles, they didn't turn out as well as they should have done. Um, Bobasaur went down quickly, which was good. But after Bobasaur went down, then there was all hell where everyone was focusing different targets. Yeah. Loxy got solo by Angry Day. And then you saw Gale Force trying to take people out. It was That was where the issue was. So think, we're all back to wait for the Fire Giant now. Yeah, I think there was also one key point in that fight where Fade Esports had com just committed completely to that fight. When Gale Force landed that three-man stun just... Uh, just in front of the left side Harper camp. When he landed that stun, the rest of his team was already backing off a little bit. He went right, which kind of forced him to split off from the fight. They Six Sigma immediately went for the two stranded members of the team. And if they had capitalized and continued to aggress, Fade Esports actually could have possibly take, take, or turned that fight around and taken it victory overall. But little small tiny things like that sometimes in a team fight can be hard to predict and actually be aware of the, the going ons. Especially in a fight that, like you said, Six Sigma Still had a very large experience lead. I think Fade Esports might have realized midway through that this mm. fight is not going as well. We might have hoped it would, as and words. We're now in rinse repeat mode now because Fire Giant is going to come up soon. And we're going to sit around and wait for that to happen. I mean, you're going to see Fate Esports continue farming. The longer this game goes, they do have two Hunters, okay? And Otterish at the moment is reaching critical mass very, very soon. Mm -hmm. And when your Jabalonke reaches critical mass, you're going to have hell to pay. Nearly finished off his... First crit item, probably be looking for the range there, and then maybe Deathbringer after the Bluestone Pendant. So it's kind of rinse repeat. The last fight didn't really do much for either team, let's be honest. They fought over a Gold Fury, but it allowed Fate Esports a little bit of time to farm. So it's the grouping and the dance is once again going on. I, I don't expect we'll see Bobasaur jumping aggressively over that attack speed buff wall this time. I would hope. Unless we uh, he see will. Less. Uh, he will, but he maybe will. not that early when the rest of his team isn't. Yeah, exactly. Yet. And they've got wards there this time. They've got two wards down in the yeah. same spot. Like, Boba, <laughs> look. There's people here. <laughs> be careful. They need to be careful about this again. They're looking for Princey on the backside. The team just abandoned him. And he thought he had back. And Princey's got, to, Princey got forced to use beads then. And that was because his team didn't help him out at all. So, his team just backed away. And Deku was just able to walk around the back. They're looking for aggression, though. Forcing out Artorish's Jaguar as well. They did use Weakening Curse there as well. Maybe there's a chance for Fate to regroup here. They could definitely look for it. A couple things were spent on both teams in the middle of that one. 
Beads for Weakening Curse. Slight, slight advantage for the Weakening Curse. It'll be back off cooldown timer sooner. This, but... This is a round one game, just to be clear. Yeah. This is round one. I tell you, he's going to be big. There's an ultimate going in straight away, followed by the ultimate coming out from Jabalonke as well. Gale Force in, Highlight Sanguine AQQ, QQ, the Kraken did go off, but it only hit onto Gale Force. Fear No Evil only hits onto Gale Force, stopping him away. Meanwhile, Bulbasaur comes in now with a regurgitate. He's not doing a lot though, his health bar is actually dropping rapidly. Mr. Crunchy chased down and killed Gale Force on the backside of the fight. Six Sigma are calling it quits in this one, as most of the guys are going back to base right now. We'll see if Fade Esports recognize this fact. Maybe catch Vote MK. That could be a pretty big pick because I fear we're going around the backside. But Vote MK is going to skirt out to exit stage right right now. As Otter is going to try and give chase. They're going to try and take him down. Well, they're going to continue the chase. And I don't think this is worthwhile. I don't know where the rest of the team are, though. But if they do get Neath, maybe they can turn their attention to the Fire Giant once again. The kill is important. They drop it, I guess. But now Deku is back, and so is Mr. Crunchy. I'm not sure why Mr. Crunchy returned. I'm not sure why he went back. He was full health. Just use his ult. Yep, there's the engagement. They're really trying to play against four. four. This is going to be risky. Princey's very low. They might look for the kill portal through the wall, but there is a Bulbasaur awaiting. That's going to be killing in just a mo. Ooh! No, Hell it's not. Is no, it's not. You threw space and time back through as well. I don't know what. This was a really weird play. Like, Six Sigma shouldn't have gone in on that. And at the same time, Fate Esports should have defended their Giannis a lot better than they did. They kind of just watched him get beat to death. And now the engagement is on for Bobasora. He's doing a decent work. That's a fair no evil backup. But Blake Gale from Gale Force back. is going to try and stun him out. Crunch is in trouble. That was a bad chase by Six Sigma. They went way too far. They were not respecting the respawn times. Gale Force came back, had Blink. Blink stun, tectonic shift. Very, very dead monkey. So, Fade Esports right now are bringing this game back around. Level 20 has been reached by a couple guys on both teams right now. And they're looking for the Fire Giant. They have the time to do this right now. Angry Day QQ is waiting behind the wall. Kraken could potentially hurt, but you see them all nice and spread out. Oh, Bulbasaur is the one to watch out for, though. No, he's not been noticed. He comes in with a regurgitate. Prince, he's in a lot of trouble there. He pulled the ground, but the cripple stops him going through it. Now you see Bulbasaur. He's still trying to go in, but he's going to eat a lot of damage. Good Kraken. I Giant, like I said, goes to fate. But can Six Sigma clean some of them up? Adarish from the backside trying to do what he can. Low on health. He can knock it close to this fight. It looks like Fade Esports successfully going to disengage from this. Deku's still giving mm. chase. The stun from Loxie is going to miss, but he'll glory bound back out to safety. They're looking for a pick right here, but it looks like Fade Esports got the big objective, got a couple of kills, and now are looking to get back to base, heal themselves up. Last time they got that Fire Giant, they didn't really have opportunity to use it, but things have kind of evened out a little bit. They could try to make some plays off of this one. Well, as long as they don't dance at the golf here again, take some towers yeah. down, they've got an opportunity to do that. I think that whole the end of that fight then was really, really good because of the fact Artrich did something that it may have looked really simple. He pressed Darkest of Knights, right? Mm -hmm. And when that happens, no one on Six Sigma can see anything. And that's precisely what happened. They all didn't know whether they were getting engaged on, they didn't know where the enemy gods were moving to, so they just stood around and waited. And that gave Fate Esports a little bit of time to just disengage and keep Fire Giant belts on all but one member of their team. Not a bad decision from them. It's a shame the Fire Giant didn't come out any differently, but Fate Esports are now the ones with the commanding lead. And this team comp will start to work a little bit stronger now because these Haunters are now online and the tanks, Look at the front crits. lines, have actually got some levels. 1,063 yep. damage crits coming up for Shivalanke right now. Deku Script taking a lot of poke as this fight uh, begins. Not even committing to it right now. That's a Gold Fury going the way of Fate Esports first of the game. I don't want to say that they're in control of this game right now, but Six Sigma have definitely lost their forward momentum. Oh, they've lost the focus momentum, and now the gold lead's going to swing as well, because if they just push down this left-hand lane, take these two towers down, that's an additional 400 gold in each of their pockets, mm -hmm. so that's going to thin it down even further. Experience, well, the experience lead is just going to continue closing, because Six Sigma are all level 20 apart from Deku Scrub, so that just means the experience gap's going to slow. Yeah, there's a tier 1 falling, not defended, no surprise right there, 500 gold is not worth your team's potential life, and potentially the game at this point. Princey has to be careful though, he's been playing very far forward, Deku going in, they're looking for the fight, this might not go in their favor. Nope, Fado Evil on the backside, you can see Orish getting focused by Mr. Crunchy, but we saw on the backside too, looking for Orish, but Kraken does hit Gale Force, as the team were not there to support him, because they were getting focused on the back, but is crits! Bye they Bulba, we miss you. scary. And they do AoE damage, and I keep hearing a... Okay, that was Bakasura with the Golden Bow. Or Decent Bow, rather. Yep. Spreading around. I thought it was like... If that's on Shibalanka, the AoE damage coming at him would just be insane. But he's going for the full crit build. Rage not yet online. And once that is, the crits will be coming out just that much more frequently. And it'll be hitting even harder because 1,063 damage is just not enough, apparently, for him.
Well, they've got to do something Six Sigma here, or they'll lose this tower very, very quickly here. But there's not a lot they can do against the range poke of the Jubilonke and the Ool as well. Plus the pull potential from the Sylvanas. They do lose the Tier 2 tower. That brings it back within 1,500 gold already of that gold lead. This game is right even right now in terms of towers available. Phoenix is, but the Fire Giant's still on fate. It is. Phoenix is down to just around half health right now. They're making good use of these double hunter lineups, but they both got caught by belly flop. That's not looking too good for those guys right now. Through space and time, Zyferia is not in a great spot. Loxy finds a kill, though, to answer one back. They're still okay. If they look to disengage right here, this will still be a pretty decent overall victory. They were looking for that Phoenix, but just couldn't find it. That was not a good overall victory from Fate Sports at all. That was a bad misplay from Aris and Loxy Poxy, honestly. As two hunters, you don't group together, give them the yeah. opportunity to engage. Zyferia had to give up his life in trade for that. And a one for one, yeah, it's fine, but could you have got a Phoenix instead? You potentially could have. You just grouped up and you gave the team an opportunity to hold on to it for the time being. So we're all square in this game. In my standing, we're all square, but we're hitting late game. And Fate Esports have the late game composition in my eyes with the double hunter, double guardian. Well, coming up on the 33-minute mark, given the fact that uh, just about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago or so, there was a pretty significant advantage by Six Sigma. We're down to one tower a team. We are down to pretty much experience lead meaning nothing and a 1.5k gold lead. It's, uh, yeah, like you said, pretty much back to even right now. Fire Giant buff will have just worn off. 40 seconds on the respawn time. We're going to be moving to a dance here again in the near future. You see everyone stocking up in those wards and sentries. Yeah, I'll stock it up for it because it's very important. This next fire giant will be the difference between the win and the loss for either team, I feel. Just depends on how many survive with the fire giant are still online or on their team. Um, depends which way this game's going to go right now. I think this could go, honestly, either way, but I think Fate, Fate have the advantage now. Fate are the ones in the driving seat. Neath is not a hyper carry, Jubilonke is. Hombats, yeah. yes, hyper carry status, but has to get up close and personal against two hunters and two guardians. It's not going to be an easy ask. I don't want to say it's an issue necessarily, but that last fight in that left lane, both Hunbats and Bakasura were looping around behind towards Bak uh, towards either of the Hunters. The problem then becomes they have Sprint 3. You use that, they really don't have a way. Bakasura has a slow, which Sprint counters. Mr. Crunchy has the Fear No Evil, which they pop beads. Either one of those Hunters can just rip apart them apart while they're not able to get into range to actually do any damage. So, yeah, they're Assassins. They're not, they're not a Sir Cat or anyone like that who can just jump in and just destroy someone they have to use auto attacks which gives time for sprint to work for those hunters yeah we'll see what's going to happen now with the boys of fate esports i'd be interested to see if they actually send ship along i suggest that maybe sending Giannis over to split push a little bit they could look for that with the through space and time or even send jibalonke over there because he can influence with darkest and knights and he's going to be able to 1v1 jibalonke at this stage not many people to be yeah. honest and obviously with that through space and time can then be channeled to bring jibalonke back to the engagement where the other guy is going to be stuck on the other side of the map so is a potential for a bit of split push. It's not the easiest thing in the world to call, but the stance dance, so, so precariously ba balanced between these two teams now that nobody wants to make a mistake. This next fight could affect the side of the game. Respawns are up to about 55 seconds. The fight is on right now. There's a Kraken coming out as well as the Fear No Evil. The fight, though, is now Fate down. Esports engaging. It is because all the ults are down on Six Sigma. There's nothing left. They've only got Neethal available, and now the chase is on from Fate. They're looking to bring down as many as they can. Loxy Poxy in trouble. Has to leap away. The belt from Daku. As you can see, Irish is chasing down targets where he can. Bobasaurus does find Gale Force, though. And that fight still actually goes in favor of Six Sigma. A one for zero exchange. But Fate Esports in the position to start the FG. They are. It's dying very, very quickly. 50% just a couple seconds. They can get that hand of the gods right there. It is. It's going to be going to Fate Esports once again. Now the question is going to be, can they get out? Loxy very, very low. Going to use that glory band back to safety. D Six Sigma look like they might want to give chase. But they're going to end up disengaging once again. I've got to say, Fate Esports is one thing that I've seen them do well is disengage well. They've yeah. disengaged well. Some mistakes have been made. Yeah, they've got things to work on after this game, but that the disengaging composition, they're doing a good job of getting out of dodge when they can and losing as little as possible when they actually do so. But at the moment, Fate Esports, once again, with the Fire Giant, only Gale Force didn't get it. You're not going to be upset when you've got a Jibalonke and an Ul with that on top of that Princey as well as that Yarnus. So Fate Esports in the driving seat in this one right now. Yeah. Without a doubt at this point. Otter's full build. You see that lovely little red glow around his entire body. We have moved to the point of the games where the hunters are full build buying those potions as well for just that much extra damage. The buffs on the left hand side of the map are gonna be online. I'm, hmm. 
this point in the game, do you shift to giving the red buff over to the hunters, or do you keep it on the just for that extra more damage? You know, why always hit for eleven hundred. Oh, I mean, always you always bump mage. that up to thirteen hundred. Always, always, yeah, always in a mage. Always in a mage. A mage overall does more damage. The the red buff is more important to a mage than a fire giant buff is. That's how good a mage with a red Fair buff enough. is. It's more important than a fire giant for a mage to get that red buff. So oh. definitely give it over to them. If they had kept going to left lane, they might actually have caught those two mm. backing out. Very, very risky and lucky call there for Six Sigma. Getting out alive. The crits coming out on Deku Scrub. Almost 500 damage right now. They need to shut down those 80 carries, but with that double guardian lineup, it is not going to be an easy task. Yep, well, they're going to start sieging up the mid lane now. Well, who's going to tank it is the question. I want to see someone try and dive in and tank it. Let the Haunters go free and start farming it. And killing this tower off at the moment. They're waiting. Like, Deku wasn't even there for the time being. Then the backers have gone back to base. They could have got some free poking. But they wait for minions. Minions are here. Minions are gone. And the siege is going to be slow again. They have to just dive to an extent. They have to just have one of the tanks tank it. They can't wait for minions. Because, no. you know, with the wave clear that's available from Neath as well as um, Angry Day's Whirlpools, that's it. The wave's not going to last long. Yeah, but if I flip the camera over here quick, there's no wards down there. I mean, they have to suspect or if not saw a Deku Script back there. Belly flop will be down. They can land the grab. There's the bubble popped off of Deku Script's Magi's Blessing. I know I get why they're holding back. They don't want to get caught out and burst down because those 200s mm -hmm. have to get up in there. It's a tight little choke point they have to go through to actually start this fight out. But at the same time, they're wasting this fire giant buff. They have a minute and 25 seconds left on it. Deku Script zoning out, looking for Otterish. Going to force the rising Jaguar. Belly flop is this now is down. Yeah. This Sigma's could be fine with this for the time being, but the belch has been used, Gale Force eats a little bit of poke, but what Six Sigma are doing here is they're not hitting the Phoenix, they're wasting the Fire Giant buff slowly, yep. they've got a bit of time left, but they need to start going to, there we go, Zyphaeus going to attack it finally, but Deku's on the back. There we go, there's Bella. all the ultimates coming out, Loxbox will barely survive that, no he will not, in the end does end up falling to that one, oh, I believe it's a Fear No Evil dot coming into play. The Phoenix once again not falling. This is going to be the problem. Cracking this base of Six Sigma. They have, they're on the back foot right now, but this fight is still very strong when that Phoenix is still standing. Gale Force takes a lot of damage, but so does Mr. Crunchy. Zyphavia comes in to heal up at the front line and prevent them from pushing further forward. The team of Fate Esports backing away here because Prince is low. I think they could have potentially turned this one around if they wanted to. Irish does have the kill potential on all these targets. They don't have ultimates left. And with the belly flop being down, I don't know why they don't look for a reinitiation very, very soon. Gale Force is pretty low as well. That might be the reason why Zyph uh, Zyphiria, rather getting low will survive that engagement. It looks like Fire Giant buff this time will have once again gone to waste. They weren't really able to find anything. Six Sigma did a very, very good job of holding on and defending it. Dude, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be going long now. We're gonna be going long. Yeah. The reason we're gonna be going long is because Fate Esports don't wanna throw and they're scared of making a mistake. Uh, Six Sigma have done pretty well at the tower defense, but what they're doing is they're blowing every single freaking ultimate on one guy and, and then only getting a kill. Yeah, well, they, they got the kill just at the end, barely yeah. finding the kill. And then they have to sit back and wait again or try and continue the initiation. If Fate Esports can get through that initial burst of Six Sigma and survive or just lose one man, they should be looking to reinitiate and try and take down kills. They took a lot of poke hanging around a little bit then, but Fire Jazz coming back up soon. Take Sigma's in position. And um, we'll see how this one goes, as all the Sentry Wards are for them right now. Yeah, looking for a possible pick on the right-hand side of this jungle. You know, I can't help but wonder to a little bit of an extent. They didn't bother picking up buffs before they were sieging that Phoenix. Every little bit does help. He said it's 20% extra damage on that red buff onto that mage. That's a lot of extra mm -hmm. damage. The extra bit of you know, 15 basic attack damage. Oh, who cares? When you factor in all down. the crits and stuff like that, they were both up. Oh, well, Bellyflop just come out, Loxy Poxy's forced to use bees to jump away, and now Princey comes in, the pull is good onto Deku, but it is a tank after all, Tremors buys a second, but that's the disengage, there's no ultimates used by either side there, a little bit of hanky-panky between these two teams, but no kills just yet, just some Medjai's pops. I'll have those down there, never hurt, there's the Intoxicate coming out, there's all the ultimates being spent, Otterish will survive that engagement again, Gale Force falls in the middle of it all though. Yeah, he does. Deku scrub actually picking that one up. Princey's looking for the kill onto Deku in response. One out should be enough, but the Kraken hits onto Princey. Not enough to kill him. Meanwhile, on the backside, Loxy Poxy's in trouble for Mr. Crunchy. He does find the kill, does Mr. Crunchy. Now with the World Weaver hitting onto Princey. Princey can be potentially chased down. He has the cooldown reduction, though, as expected of a Yarnus. Can he get away from Angry Day? They're still chasing. Whirlpool attacks. One hit will be enough. There we go.
Yep, that's going to be a three kill overall going the way of Six Sigma. This is a fight they need to get themselves back in this driving seat. driver's seat. The first fire giant of the game for those guys is about to be taken. Zephyr is going to be zoned out and chased away by Bobasur on this one. He's not going to commit to the chase too much. Otterish is trying to Otterish. do the 10, but not able to no. stop it. Oh, he gets a kill, though. He does manage to pick up the kill with the last crit to actually land into Mr. Crunchy's face. He's going to get hit by the Whirlpool there. Around the backside comes Bobasaur as well as I fear. He needs to give him support here. But nope, he's going to go down here. There's no escape for him now. Now they're going to turn their attention to Zyperia. Or maybe just the tier 2 tower. Nope. Zyperia's the call. They're going to look for chase him, to chase him down. After that, they could potentially look to end this one. Phoenix is in the mid lane as well as the left lane are exposed. The minions almost in position as well to move that backdoor protection. They're going to be going straight yeah. for the Titan. They want to close this game out and not find themselves at another spot where they have to dance and try and defend. Well, Loxy's not up for a little while, so they're going to be able to burst a lot of damage onto this. Titans are weak at this stage of the game, and the Titan is going to fall. Seven, oh, don't five, tell me it fall. no, zero percent health on the Titan, oh and they God. defended it. The Titan health bar was at zero <laughs> percent. <laughs> It had less than I half that, a think, percent of health. I think that's game, by the way. That very well could be. Respawn I, I think times. that's game. Mr. Crunchy's going to be I off, think but that's they game. have so much crowd control. I, I think Leave that's the game. minions. Just rush it down. Ignore the minions, Gale Force. Yeah, just, Go. Go for the that's, Titan. That's game. Fate, fate can win. It's only Crunchy. Crunchy's got Fear No Evil. That's it. He's got Fear No Evil. That's it. They're going to go for it. There's still 30 He's seconds out left on anybody else to respawn right now. This is going to be another massive comeback for victory evil. for Fade Esports. That's it. As long as Zyphiria lives there. Yep, he lives. That's it. That should game. be game. That should be game. Damage coming out slowly. They don't have that backdoor protection getting removed. This is actually going to be Loxy fairly tank close. It. They need to go straight for it. If, Loxy, or if any of these guys fall, that could Crunchy be a big smart. turnaround. He's bouncing around Crunchy's trying to save so life. smart. He's taking the weak ones. The minions are in oh there gosh. too. The Titan's doing work as well. The counter throw. Are you serious? Loxy, stop. Loxy. Uh, this. Uh, I need a med kit. Well, um. Oh, well, Weaver, there's game a game again? Question mark. Uh, this that should, should be game. Be game again. We said that a minute that, like that's 20 definitely seconds game. ago. That's definitely game. <laughs> That's, that's definitely on, game now, right? On. Because look at the Titan. Yeah. It's only Shibalonke. <laughs> He's got no Darkest of Nights. There is a slight, slight, slight this, this chance. Is either right? going to, this is going to either be game <laughs> or the hypest comeback in Smite history with a 1v4 this, If Arish, if Arish 1v4s this, he is Shibalonke. Here we go. No. Nope. Nope. They're going straight for the Titan. Nope. Not going to give him that opportunity. Nope. His health dropping too rapidly. Nope. One more kill nope. coming in. That so. was unfortunate for Fade Esports. They made probably the closest defense I have seen, period. Possibly the closest defense we've had on stream for any competitive Smite game so far. 0% on the Titan. And it's it lived. GG felt like casual. Yeah, hey, post-game scores. I'm still sitting here with my mouth open on that one. I, I know Fade Esports, we said it too, the that was the game, <laughs> but the game ended up costing them in the end. That was just a round of 32 game. That Looking back, if you asked me 10, 15 minutes in the game, who was going to win this game, I would have said Six Sigma hands down. Fade Esports were just under the tower, getting pressured the entire game. Somewhere along the way, Fade Esports just <laughs> like, hey, you know, we just won that fight. That fight won even. We can actually do this, guys. Okay. They got their confidence going and brought us to a 30, a 44 minute game in the round of 32, where like I, I thought this was going to be a 15 minute, 20 minute game, and then we have that ending. This round I'm of 32. Like and I hope you all enjoyed the EU broadcast for the Challenger team. We'll be back next week for the round of 32 game. Thanks for, thanks for staying by. Good luck with um, your future week. Because I don't think we're going to be able to top that today, honestly. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to top it, but actually looking at the bracket today, the game's coming up, the team's in this EU Challenger Cup. Guys, if if this is anything to, as of a preview of what is to come, today is going to be crazy, as is the remainder of the EU Challenger Cup. We're going to be finding out what happens next. I believe we'll be jumping back in, watching Six Sigma face off against the Broncos. Who I imagine after their defeat in the qualifiers to the SPL for summer are going to be thirsty for this victory to get those early seeding points online. So we have another what should be good exciting game coming up for you in just a few minutes guys. Stick around. We'll be back as soon as possible.